And here we are in our nice new, well, new to us anyways, combine. Top of the line, base game combine, man. Fantastic, I love it. Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to uh, move right on into June. However, uh, we can sell chocolate here in May, so it's late in the day on May 3rd, and I wanted to bring you back uh, for some chocolate sales. We're not going to make a ton of money, but, you know, we'll, we'll be getting the best price for whatever we currently have on hand. Uh, now, I'm going to... Um, okay. Um, I, I went ahead and got that gooseneck trailer I was talking about, I think, in the last episode. Uh, off the mod hub and uh, let's look at that i'm not 100 percent sure if this will work with universal um auto load it's supposed to have an auto load feature but i'm not sure if it'll work with universal so yeah there it is right there okay yeah this is the one uh so this is a really nice trailer uh it's a gooseneck which means we can put it on our pickup truck and i uh, really like it so Let's see, what are the options? Configuration, production pallets, auto load. Um, I'm going to try it first without that to see if the universal auto load will work with it. And if it doesn't, then we'll, then we'll come back and do the production pallets instead. Okay, so as far as wheels go, uh, Continental look good enough for me. Wheel setup standard, standard two. Yeah, that's good. Uh, design is wood or metal. The wood actually looks really nice. Um, however, the metal is going to be better because this is almost certainly stainless steel or aluminum. And it'll hold up better, you know, out in the weather. Uh, it's $1,200 more for the metal. You know what? Let's just go with the wood and we'll just assume that it's well... Uh, you know, lacquer or whatever, because <laughs> I'm not, I don't actually have any indoor storage for this uh, yet. We're going to have to get some more sheds going at some point. Okay. So standard mud guards versus both back front standard. I'm thinking both. Let's go both branding. What are the options there? Lizard logistics. Uh, nah, let's, let's not do any branding. Whoops. Okay. Obviously we want the gooseneck, uh, gooseneck rather attacher. That's kind of the whole point and why we're doing this. Tension belts, Euro or US? I don't know. Oh, when you do US, it puts like the little winches down there. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. I, I like the color. Um, except for let's make the rim. Actually, no, let's just leave it the way it is. That's all good. Okay, so this is going to cost us $9,200. But again, if it doesn't work with Universal Auto Load, I'm going to give it back and give myself $9,200 back. Or, you know, just I'm just going to make sure I get a total of $9,200 back. And then we'll redo it with the other pallet thing. But I don't want to do that first because there's a possibility that it could conflict if, if the other one does work. Okay, so let's purchase this. Here we go. All right, now, let's jump in here. Yeah, very nice trailer, man. I like it. So this, we'll, we'll use this for all of our smaller deliveries. Looks like an automatically adjusted height. Do we need to connect anything? Nope, looks like that just happened automatically. Very nice, okay. Let's pull over to our pallet warehouse. And we'll unload our chocolate. So I got five pallets of chocolate. And now for the moment of truth. 
Will universal auto load work? It does. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, that's a partial pallet, so that's why I didn't pick it up. So if I just press O and then do it again, there we go. Fantastic. All right. I love it. Nice new trailer. And it's a low boy, too, um, or a transport trailer, so we can... Um, uh, you know, transport vehicles on it if we if we needed to at some point in time. I'll have to figure out what the key key for that is. I thought it was X, but it doesn't appear to be the case. All right, now who's uh, who's buying chocolate? Chocolate. It looks like Red Marble's got the best price. All right, so let's run this up to Red Marble. Ten thousand three hundred and eighty-five dollar make you holla. All right, very nice. That um, how much did we pay for this trailer again? Did that completely pay for it or not? I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it did, and, and then some. Very nice. Okay, now we have ourselves a nice flatbed gooseneck trailer that we can use with the pickup and easily back up. That's kind of the main reason. You know that I don't like our our original trailer because it's got that dolly on it and it's just a pain in the neck to back up. And we won't have that problem with this trailer. So I'm very pleased with our purchase. All right, guys, I'm gonna head back to the ranch, and we're gonna sleep and head right on into June. So I'll see you uh, tomorrow morning on June the first. All right, guys, welcome to uh, June the. First, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at our finances for the previous month for May. Uh, so we purchased the, the trailer there. Uh, these are kind of the usual costs here. Excuse me, we made a total of $118,662 off of sold products. 10000 of that was from the chocolate, so we made about 108000 ish on the uh, greenhouses. Uh, but that's to be expected because the price is for the produce are dropping, uh, but they'll start kicking back up in the late summer and into fall. Um, the water cost is the same, $230 miscellaneous. I'm not even sure exactly what that came from. And then um, our our pallet distribution money that we paid out was $25.72. So let, fewer pallets were distributed in May. Um, okay, so that pretty much takes care of our finances. All right, we have a couple of really major things that are going to happen here in uh, June. Uh, the first one of them is that we have to do our second hay cutting and the second stage of that. And by the way, I don't remember if I mentioned this to you or not, but I think I may have figured out the issue or figured out how to work around the issue where auto drive was not unloading into the silo, uh, the second silo once the first one was full. Uh, but I'll get into that later. So we, we won't worry about that for right now. Uh, the cool thing, though, is we get to finally use our awesome uh, Claus Leg Legzion um, Combine and harvest our barley field. So let's go ahead and, you know, I, I don't think I'm <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to pull this out of here. I'm surprised I got it in here in the first place. So I think we're just going to reset this. I'm not even going to bother trying. So let's just grab it. Um, we have to get the combine. There we go. And we're just going to reset it and that'll pop it back out in the yard for us. Okay. And uh, we're not going to be able to keep it in here because it's just, it's too, too tight getting it in there. All right. Now, uh, first thing we need to do with our combine is we need a header. We don't have a header for it. And one of you guys mentioned to me in the comments to take a look at the, the honey, honeycomb headers or whatever they're called. Here, let's look at those. Uh, which I did, and even downloaded them. Um, oh, did I download them? Maybe I didn't. Uh, you know, I think I might have downloaded them, but I forgot to activate them. But you know what? I'm not going to use them anyways because they're incredibly expensive. Um, the 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 version of that header that's the same width as this is is over twice as much money. It's like, are you kidding me? Maybe in the very end to end game when we're like filthy, filthy rich, but <laughs> that's too much money. Uh, so we're going to just go ahead and go with the Kloss header that goes with this. Um, this is a 13.8 meter header and it's going to cost us $90,000. But again, 
the, that honey header, it's not called honey, it's honey something, but it was over twice as much of this. And I was like, nah, that's, that's just too much money. Okay. So we're going to, what we're going to do with this too, is we're going to lease it to own. And that way, if it does happen to come up on sale, um, you know, then we can, we can, uh, turn in the lease and then buy it. If not, then, you know, we'll just lease it to own. So we're not throwing down $90,000 immediately. All right. Very cool. So that handles that. I don't think we need, we probably are going to want to get to the header trailer for it eventually, but I think we can get out to field 57 without that, with a little bit of fancy maneuvering. Um, now I also want to get, um, I want to get a, <coughs> excuse me, a baler going and well, there, okay. There's, there's, there's several things that we can do. And I'm just trying to decide what the best order is. So let's just jump into here and we'll get the combine out to the field first. And I'm going to have to drive it because the AI won't drive combines with headers on them. So let's do that first and then we'll figure out the next step here. Now I can, um, I can, and I am going to use course play and auto drive ultimately, you know, to do all this, but I kind of want to, operate the combine the first time myself just because this is a, a big moment for us man um so so i think at least for this first time i'm i'm gonna actually drive the combine all right so can we get out through here and we'll go ahead and use um uh the gps mod too along with that okay so we got through there and I think I don't hmm, I don't know if we can get through there because I think the bunker's going to be in the way. Uh, definitely not going to get through there. What about through here? This is going to be tight, but I think we can do it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. And I want to get the combine to the far corner of field 57. That's where we're going to start because that's a nice square corner. Okay, so although I'm not planning on using it, at least not to start with, we are going to set up a course play course on here so that the so that the baler uh, can follow it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is bring up course play, and we want to go to no course, or click on that, and then we need to click field position and tell it we're doing this on field 57. We'll bring up the course generator. And we're going to do the same thing we did with field 71. I'm just going to do a bunch of headlands. So it just does a spiral to the center. It seems to me like that is the best way to do this. Um, so, uh, let's, let's tr do 12 cause this is a little bit bigger field than 71. And yeah, so we'll generate a, f a course with 12 circles around and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. That looks pretty good. I, th I think that'll work. I wonder why he's starting over here, though. I want him to start here. So maybe what we should do is... Here, let's remove that course. Let's actually get him on the field. Okay, so... Because I think in doing that, it'll, it'll tell course play. This is where, where we want to start. Oh... You know what? That's uh, technically not on our property, but we'll, we'll be able to hit it coming from the other direction. How oh, interesting. Okay. So let's get on the field. All right. Now, let's try this again. Uh, so we'll go here and generate the course. And I want the start point to be up here now. Hopefully it'll do that. Yes. Very good. Okay, cool. Uh, now, what we want to do is we want to uh, go to here and save this. And we already got a folder 457. So we want to save the course. And we're going to call this F57 Class Combine. 
13.8 M uh, for the 13.8 meter header. Very good. Okay, so that takes care of that. And now we have a course for the baler to follow. Now we're not we're not going to follow the course exactly the same because we're going to use GPS, but it should be close enough, especially if we put the uh, the V rake um, on that it should it should work. I'm expecting it to work. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and start around, uh, and we'll create the first headland, and then I <clears throat> then I'll have to get a trailer um, out here as soon as we fill up. Okay, so. What we want to do though is we would now want to go into um, a GPS. So let's close course play. Well, we can even close auto drive for now too. Okay, so GPS is on, but what we have to do is we have to activate it first and then go into the menu. So I have those keys mapped to four and five on my keyboard. Those aren't the default keys. Okay, we want to set this to auto width so it automatically adjusts to the width of the header itself. And then we want to go uh, headland stop at nine meters out. Okay, that's good. We can work with that. And then we want to set this to A plus heading. So we'll set A. And then we're going to be going 180 degrees this way. Okay, good. Uh, let's delete this there. And then we're going to save this as F. Uh, 57 plus combine basically the same name 13.8 meter okay and then we'll save that failed to save track please create or load a track first oh uh didn't we just do that though There. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't seem to take. Okay, so we should now... Oh, there we go. Okay, you have to move it for the lines to show up. And we also want this to actually go this direction, too. And it's all screwed up once again. Okay, let's try this again. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, let's just delete that. Oh, I guess we could have edited it too, but whatever. You know what? I'm going to delete all of these too because I don't know how accurate those are. Okay, let's go back to here. Auto width. Make sure that's set to 4528. Okay, then we'll go here. We want to go to A plus heading. Put in 180 degrees. Oh, you know what? I think this needs to be 90 degrees. That's why it was going the wrong way. Okay, yeah. Set cardinal. And then we call this F57 class combine. We'll just do comb 13.8 meter. Safe. I think it's flipped because we flipped it there maybe it still doesn't look like it's set right though uh, with the auto width so alt R is the key to do that and that didn't seem to do anything or maybe maybe it's correct but it's just offset a little bit um, I don't know why it's not starting from the edge of the field that's really weird I want it to start from this edge. Now, I know there's a way we can move it over, adjust it. Uh, I have to look up the keyboard shortcut for that. But the thing is, is it going to save it that way? Uh, guidance steering. Shift track left. Alt page down. Okay, let's try that. Whoops, sorry. There. That's exactly what we want right there. Alt page down. Okay, now let's go back into here and let's, uh, can we just save it? Track name already exists. Click edit and then save. 
Well, maybe that maybe that saved it by hitting the edit button. I don't know. I guess we won't really be able to tell until we load it in the future. But this is exactly what we want here. Okay. So, let's turn that on. Turn this on. And go to town. Fantastic. Oh, we need to set this to swath mode. Don't want to forget that. Okay, cool. Here we are in our nice new, well, new to us anyways, combine. Top of the line, base game combine, man. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. GPS is keeping us on a nice straight line here. Very cool. OG's all tickled to death. He's in his brand new big 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 combine, man. I think it's nasty looking. I hate to get caught up in that. That'd probably be a death sentence. Yeah, we should get a nice yield off this field because we we did all the all the stuff to it to get a maximum yield. Okay. Turn that off and then reposition this way. Now there's a keyboard shortcut for rotating, but just because my keyboard's in kind of a weird position, it's easier for me just to come in here and do that. Um, can we get it though to go all the way over like before? No, it doesn't want to go over any further than that. So, I guess what we'll do is we'll follow this line, and then I'll, I'll just have to come back and get that little strip separately. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. All right. I think we'll just keep following the line all the way off the field here. And we're 71% full, and we're only halfway around the field. That's pretty cool. All right, what I want to do is back up and get this other little strip. We'll do that now, so that way everything is perfectly lined up with GPS. Okay, we're back at this end of the field, so let's switch back to this direction, and I think we're going to want to do, um, let's, yeah, let's do this, and then we'll have to get the, the edge again like before. Why is that not kicking in? There we go. Maybe we were too far off the field or the combine was at some kind of a weird angle for it or something. I don't know. Okay, we are 92% full. Let's turn around and get this little strip here, and then we're going to have to get a trailer out here. Okay, you stay there, and let's grab... Um, let's grab the... Man. Oh, I need to wash this thing. Oh, 
Okay, back in the combine. Look at that beautiful barley. Okay. Let's continue on with our headland creation here. We'll just have to, this one we'll just do free mode because I don't want to mess with, I mean, I could set an angle on the GPS, but not really that big a deal. Okay, so now going up this way, let's flip this back around. Um, it's right at the edge of my property, but I went a little bit over when I created this new field. I'm surprised it let me do that, actually. So let's just follow the line, and then like I did before, I'll come back down and get that little strip myself. Alright, what I think I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to turn the combine over to course play. And I'm just curious to see um, how close it will be to, to this because we were going based off GPS. I, I'm thinking it should be exactly the same. Um, so let's turn GPS off and uh, we'll bring uh, course play. Nope, not that. Course play back up. And it's already loaded. I want to look at the the course here. Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty close, really. Looks like it would have been over to the left just maybe a little bit more, but probably not significantly so, especially if we use the V-Rake on the baler later. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll turn that off, and I'm just going to tell you to start at the nearest waypoint. And work with should be good. All right. Let's let course play take it from here. What are you doing, man? Oh, there he goes. Okay. Yeah, he's turning in for the next row. Okay, let's jump back into our trailer, uh, which is right here. And let's see, we're 33% full. So I'm just going to wait until I have a completely full trailer. And then when that happens, we're going to drive back to the farm. And we are going to finally, after, what, 125 episodes, purchase <laughs> our own silo uh, to dump the grain in. And, well, well, we'll top the chickens off first, actually. So uh, when this is completely full, I'll bring you guys back and we'll go from there. Okay, so he's going to miss. Oh, what is he doing, actually? Yeah, he's following he's following course plays route and not uh, not the GPS route that I was doing. Oh, we're completely full. Okay. All right. Good. So, let's drive back over to the yard and let the combine continue on. So, the next step here, well, first we're going to top the chickens off, and then we're going to get our silo set up, and once we have the silo set up, we can set up auto drive to to deliver. Okay, so 
Chickens first. Nice. Okay. Now this one, because it's so close to the trigger of the other hen house, you got to be right in the exact spot I've, I've noticed. So it's a little more touchy. Whoa. And yeah, we're just kind of going in the ditch, aren't we? There we go. See, yeah, I just barely pulled too far forward. There we go. Okay. Now, um, silo time. So, I, I think we need to hang on to about, uh, probably around 35 to 40,000 liters of grain, because what I want to do is I want to be able to supply the chickens for an entire year. So we don't have to, you know, buy any more grain for them. And 40,000 liters is probably a little more than we need, but I'd rather have a little more than a little than not enough. And if it turns out, you know, that I way overestimated, we can just pull some of it out and, and take it to the flour mill. But here's what we're going to do for the silo. So I have uh, downloaded here. Let's save first before I do anything else, just in case I screw something up here. Okay. So I have um, found on the mod hub a, an underground silo. So, so what it basically does is it just gives us the, the load and unload uh, platform. And then the rest of it is underground, right? And, it, it, you know, it's always bothered me from day one that we have this big silo here and we've never actually been able to use it. Um, so we're going we're gonna to pretend like we're activating this silo and we're going to use it. Uh, so we have this silo here for 200,000. Now, this thing, it's a universal uh, silo, so it should pretty much store just about anything. Um, the thing about this, though, is we've got one here, a universal here for 100, 100 grand. And it's it stores a million liters. And then for 200 grand, it jumps from 1 million to 10 million liters. <laughs> and I, th I think this is a little bit on the OP side, but... There's nothing in between. I, this this is a, a specific fruit silo. It's it, it can only you can only use it for one item at a time. Um, yeah, so there's nothing in between there. So I think we're just gonna, you know, uh, we're just gonna get this one and, and call it good, and then we'll never have to worry about silo space again. Because I can't imagine we'd ever need 10 million liters of storage. <laughs> uh, but I think one million liters is fine for now. But it, you know, it might. We, we might outgrow it in the future. And so we're just going to go with this one and call it good. Okay, so let's just make sure it's square. It looks like it is. And we want to put it right about in the center of this silo. And we're going to also have to press the V key and turn off the collision. Because otherwise it's not going to let us put it here. And I think that's right about where we want it. Boom. Okay. We finally, ladies and gentlemen, after 125 episodes, I think, <laughs> have our own silo. Oh, man. It's about time. Better late than never, though, right? Okay. So let's open it up. And again, we're, we're, we're pretending that it's actually going into that silo, but in reality, it well, not in reality, but it's, it's an underground silo. Okay. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and tip. What do we got? 20,000 liters into here. And we'll probably put, like I said, another 15 to 20,000 in here. And then the rest of it's going to go into the grain mill. Very cool. All right. Let's drive back out to the field and see how our combine's doing. He's probably getting close to being filled up again. Oh, he is. Yeah, it says it needs to be unloaded. Okay. So we'll go get another load. 
and that way we can finish uh, putting everything in our silo we want and then everything else is going to go into the grain mill and we'll probably go ahead and set up auto drive for that you know the next time we do this what I could do is just X the field first with the combine before I set it loose that way it takes care of all the corners here that it's missing that might be the, a good way to handle that for the future it feels good though to finally be harvesting a big field of grain that we own entirely it's not the first time we've done a big field but it's the first time we've done a big field that we own so we get every last single grain okay I think it'll fill up at 68 percent uh, it's taking a lot longer now though because the combine itself is no longer full so let's let, actually let it um, fill up a little bit more and we'll kind of we'll catch it when it comes around the corner over here there we go all right we're maxed out 